How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here bringing you guys a list of over 25 things that you can do every single day within Animal Crossing New Horizons on Nintendo Switch. This is going to showcase all sorts of things and regardless of if you're brand new to the game or if you've been playing the game since launch, you guys are definitely going to find this absolutely informative. Now, as usual, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys didn't already subscribe, make sure you guys click on that button. It's absolutely free and consider turning on notifications so you don't miss a beat. All right, I'm going to go through this. We're going to go shotgunning and uh, I hope you guys can keep up. Number one is going to be shooting things out of the sky. I'm kidding. That's totally not number one, but it's there. So I have to do it. So yeah. Okay, well, now that that's out of the way, let's actually get this list started. That one didn't count. Okay, number one is going to be as soon as you boot up your game, you are going to have some mail, inevitably. So, checking your mail is very, very good. Especially if you guys are on top of doing all the nook shopping, which is something that we'll get to a little bit later on in the list. So, make sure you guys check your mail. You might get something from the Happy Home Academy. You might get an interest payment from uh, Tom Nook, which has a whole bunch of bells, depending on how much money Money you have in the bank you might get something from CJ one of your friends on your friends list there's a lot of things going on so make sure that you guys check your mail and then open up any presents that you did indeed order okay number two on our list is definitely taking a look right over here at your nook miles plus before you go adventuring outside of your house make sure that you have a better understanding of different achievements that you can earn different miles for. If you take a look at Nook Miles Plus by pressing the plus button after you've already unlocked it from Tom Nook, you will have five achievements that you can do once per day. Uh, they range from anywhere from earning bells to selling items to taking a picture, talking to your neighbors, planting trees, or selling shells. The list goes on and on, but having a general idea of what this is will allow you to maximize your optimization of what you need to do in order to get more miles. And trust me, we'll go into Nook Miles a little bit later on the list. Okay, so moving on to number three is going to be finding that big money rock. All right, so if you guys have not seen my video on how to make about what? 16,000 bells in a couple seconds? then you need to go check that out. But I'll give you guys the cliff notes here. Uh, make sure that you guys uh, are near your rock, and then all you have to do is keep on pressing the A button over here. Oh, dang, look at that. We got some gold off of this one. Now, although this wasn't the money rock, this was uh, hitting a rock for any kind of materials. So you're going to need a lot of stone in the game, a lot of iron nuggets, and if you're a king like me, you're going to need a lot of gold nuggets too. So that was our regular rock. Uh, let's go find our money rock, shall we? Okay, here we go. By process of elimination, this is absolutely going to be our money rock. As you guys can see, we have gone through every single one of our rocks in town, and the last one, lo and behold, actually turned out to be the money rock here. Now, this is going to be your fastest way of making money in the game, once per day. As you guys can see, so much money. So make sure you guys pick that up. Uh, there's an 8,000 one if you do the entire money rock correctly by backing up to any of these walls. And another pro tip for you guys is, if there's a rock that's way too far away and you don't like climbing up all the different spots with your ladder and or going across with a vaulting pole, you can indeed eat a cherry and then hit the rock, it'll break and then respawn the next day in a random spot. Okay, so while you have your shovel in hand, let's talk about the next thing on our list, which is going to be number five. That's going to be digging up fossils. Now, of course, everyone wants their very own museum to be 100% completed with all the dinosaur fossils. So that's pretty much the only thing you're going to get every time you dig up a spot. So keep that in mind. There's going to be a maximum of five spots per town per day. So keep that in mind as you guys are kind of walking around, you'll find these little patches uh, on the ground and all you have to do is really just dig them up and you'll be able to find them in no time. So right now I'm gonna show you guys where exactly all five of my spots are. They're very, very easily placed and they're at random every single day. So just keep your eyes peeled so you don't miss any of them because every single day you wanna grab the maximum of five so that you give them to blathers and you have a higher chance of getting some brand new stuff. Okay, so once you've dug up all five of your fossils for the day, head on over to Blathers and then you can indeed have him assess every single one of those fossils so that you guys can indeed get your very awesome 100% dinosaur exhibit. I'm still working on mine, so I'll have to trade for the really obscure parts, but he'll um, assess them 
And unfortunately, since I'm so far ahead and I'm only missing a small handful, he's gonna give them all back to me. But that may be different for you guys, and if you keep on trying, you'll eventually get the 100%. And then once you do have them, you click on make a donation, and then he'll take all of the ones off your hands. Okay, next up on the list is going to be my personal favorite is finding the golden spot on the ground. Now I love the golden spot on the ground simply because it allows you to make a money tree. I've got my golden spot right over here and just like the fossils, there is one per day and it's completely random where it shows up. Uh, so make sure that you guys find it and dig it up. Hey, that's an easy 1000 bells, but you're not done over there. No, we're gonna be planting a money tree once per day. So all you have to do is head on over to your money and whatever money you have, make sure that you guys are on board with throwing 10,000 bells back inside here. If 10,000 is too much for you, then you can easily throw in a thousand bells and get yourself a free money tree. But 10,000 is really the way to go. So if you think about it, if you get 1,000 out and you bury 10,000, you're going to get a tree that looks exactly like this right here in front of my house. And that is your money tree. The money tree will give you 10,000 bell bags a pop, so you're going to net at least 20,000 bells by doing it. You don't have to water it, so just keep an eye on it and then it'll sprout your money in no time. Okay, next up on our list of things to do is going to be watering flowers. One of the coolest things in the game is going to be trying to get some really fun hybrid colorations of flowers within the game. So if you guys have access to any kinds of native flowers, or non-native flowers, definitely put them in a little checker spot so that you guys can indeed potentially get some hybrids. For example, over here, I've got a little tulip garden over and the white tulip next to the red tulip can potentially give you a very cool pink one. And you can't buy these hybrids in stores, so it's way fun to give it a shot. Now, the only way that they'll have a chance of actually breeding next to each other is if you water them. If you have a day where it actually rains, everything on your entire island will be watered, and the next day you'll be uh, having a higher chance of getting some pretty cool hybrids, uh, like this one right over here that's sprouting out. So, make sure that you guys have a watering can, you guys are all good to go to see some very cool rare hybrids. So now that you've done a little bit more things outside, it's time to take a look at the shops. Now, I highly recommend doing this every single day, depending on what level your nook's cranny is at, uh, you guys can indeed jump inside there and buy everything that they have, especially if you have that kind of money. Now, the reason why I say to buy at one of everything is because you never know if someone's going to want that specific item. And every single thing inside Nooks and Cranny, uh, Nooks Cranny right over here, can be exclusive. So you might have this plant over here and someone else might want it, but they can't get it to spawn. So make sure you guys buy the limited stuff. Take it a step further and head on over to this little table here. You can buy a lamp, you could buy an alarm clock, or you can jump inside here. And sometimes uh, people didn't even know, but you can buy all sorts of cool umbrellas. So why not? You'll have it in your catalog, or you can just shove it in your storage at home if you really want to do that too. Panda umbrella's looking really awesome. But some people didn't even know that you guys can press the R button over here, and you can see all types of different wallpaper and flooring options so that you guys can easily deck out your house. Now, what I like about this is buying one of every, everything simply because I want to have it all in my catalog. So. If I wanted a skull flooring at one time, I can go through and reorder it. So yeah, having it all in your catalog is gonna be great. Make sure that you guys buy everything out over here. Here we go, next up on our list is going to definitely take a look at turnip prices. Now, depending on what time of day the game has, there's going to be two different turnip prices that they sell at. There's gonna be one price in the morning and one price in the afternoon. So you guys can see over here the sell price for Turnips today is 80 bells, which is super, super low. So you're not going to want to sell those turnips at that price. You want to look for something in the triple digits, maybe 150, sometimes even 200 if you're really lucky. The whole turnip concept is going to be purchasing turnips on Sunday at a really, really low price and then flipping them by selling them to Timmy and Tommy at a higher price. So you can net thousands of bells. Now definitely stay tuned to the Discord. We've got a whole channel dedicated on people posting their turnip prices, so that can definitely help you out with something extra to do per day. Next up on our list is going to be taking a look around your town for special guests. 
Now, as you guys are walking around, you can easily find a special guest such as Sahara, you can find Celeste at night, you can find Gulliver washed up on the shore, you can find uh, the bug sellers, the fish guys, Flick, and uh, go through and make sure that you guys talk to them because their events are very exclusive. And then once you indeed find them, you can absolutely make tons of money off of whatever they have. So here's an example of me finding Gulliver washed up on the shore. That's a rare occurrence for me. So I'm going to talk to him, do his little event that he has, and then I'm going to capitalize on whatever he's got as his present that he gives the next day. If you haven't already gone to the town hall and or resident services, definitely do so. Our next items on our list are going to be right inside here. So make sure you guys take a look at it. The very first thing is going to be logging into the ABD. Now I've already done it for the day, so it won't pop up, but for the very first time that you do an ABD login, you're going to get a, an uh, exclusive mile amount, which is really cool. So if you log in seven days in a row, you're going to get 300 miles just by pressing this machine. And you can't go any more than seven. So if you have a consistent streak of logging into it, you're gonna get 300 every single day. So make sure you guys log in and do that. Number 12 on our list is right over here at the Nook Stop. I would definitely say head on over to Nook Shopping. Now Nook Shopping is great because it has a lot of special goods that are exclusive for the day. Camping cot, all these things over here, maybe things that you never had before. I would honestly say, take a look inside here and order up to five things per day. I always purchase the KK album because it's different every single day, but these items are something that you can add to your entire collection. Or if there's nothing in the special goods, definitely head on over to your catalog and then order the rest of the four items that you may want. If you're looking at, let's say, making an entire army of garden gnomes, then now is your time to do that. So here's your garden gnome and you guys can see, I can order up to four more of them. So your list right here is ordering five things that you may want to decorate your entire town with. You can do that once per day and it'll show up in the mail the very next day. Next up on our list is going to be paying off your loans. Simply head on over to the Nook Stop and then click on the automated bell depositor. You will have an option for loan repayments over here if you have any outstanding loans. The reason why I say and add this to the list is because you want to be able to get your biggest house as quick as possible. So if you have the money in order to pay for them, then by all means, go in here, access it, pay your loan, and then when you're done, you can talk to Tom Nook by sitting in this chair right here, and he'll give you the option of making your house even bigger the next day. So don't miss out on that. While you're talking to Tom Nook, the next thing on my list that you want to do every single day, if you have the bells for it, is going through with the infrastructure of your town. Making a public works project is going to be something that takes an entire day. So it'll show up the next day once you do it. So I would definitely say start working on bridges in places that are maybe hard to reach or you're tired of using the vaulting pole or definitely look at using incline so that you can reach those higher elevations super easier. All you have to do is click on one of these, building a bridge for example, you can ch pick and choose one of them. They're very expensive, but once you have one, it'll look really, really awesome in your town. So there's your Zen bridge. You guys can see that over here and then it'll cost you however much money it is. Put it on board, there's gonna be a Lloyd there, pay the Lloyd and by the next day, that public works project is going to be absolutely done for you. Now, once you're done with that, before you leave, I definitely want you to take a look at the Lost and Found over here. The Lost and Found houses all sorts of random stuff that you could find from rusted parts to random beige blossoming walls that someone may have left there. If you guys are playing in local mode with another person, everything that the other person catches is going to be tossed into this bin, whether it be fish or whatever, and then it's on a first in, first out kind of a deal. So if you have all the spaces taken, the very oldest stuff will get overridden. So make sure you guys check this once a day. So if you guys are looking for a quick way to make some bells, definitely consider cleaning up your shore from all of these different shells. Now the shells do wash up every single day, so make sure that you guys jump on board and grab every single one of them. I would highly suggest working counterclockwise, working clockwise, and then walking all along your shores and collecting any kinds of shells that you find. And these things do sell for a pretty penny. And luckily, there's uh, only a couple different varieties of them. So when they're in your inventory, they'll definitely stack on top of each other so that you guys can sell them at an easier time. 
Next up on our list of things to do is going to be catching bugs. Now every single day there's going to be a whole bunch of different bugs available in your town to collect, and depending on the month and hemisphere, you're going to have different ones than other people. So make sure you guys carve out some time to do a little bit of bug catching. Uh, there's tons of butterflies, there's tons of bugs on logs, you're going to find some things on the wharf, you'll find them everywhere. And filling up the Critterpedia is probably one of the funnest things that I think in the entire game so I'm going through and I'm gonna make sure that I collect every single one of these bugs it's gonna be great so before I talk to you guys about going fishing I'm gonna teach you guys a little something about making sure that you know how to get fish bait in the game if you take a look in the lower part of the screen you're going to see a little clam show his little face and spit out some water there he is right there and he's spitting towards the bottom so grab your shovel head on over to where exactly that spot is and you'll be able to see that there is indeed a manila clam inside now what I want you guys to do is head over to any kind of workbench I like to put a workbench on the opposite side of my house so that in the event that I find some clams I got one and uh, head on over and craft some fish bait this is definitely going to be a very very good thing to do considering the fact that a lot of you guys are gonna be trying to get those rare fish so using fish bait will allow you to have a very easy shot of getting a lot more spawns out. So, with that being said, now that you have fish bait in hand and you have a fishing rod available, let's head on over to the beach and let's see exactly what we can find for our next point in the list. Obviously, it's going to be fishing. There are so many different fishing spots in the game, so I want to make sure that you guys know of the different spots. We have the docks right over here. The docks or the pier is definitely going to be home of some very exclusive fish such as marlins, tuna, you name it, they're going to be over here. So make sure that you guys are on board with knowing that. So I used the, uh, the little fish bait over there and by using fish bait, it allowed me to spawn a random fish. It's not going to be a rare one, but anyway, we're going to do some fishing. There we go. So as soon as you listen to it or see the big splash, you're going to be able to catch said fish. Now, with these fish, it's all about the angle of which your casted line is. As long as it's in front of them, the fish is going to notice. So take a look over here. As long as you're lined up, you can easily throw it right in front of their face. And then as soon as they kind of notice, you're all set and ready to go. So just listen for it. You can feel the HD rumble. You can use your visuals or just your audio cues in order to get him. And the more rare the fish, the harder they are going to get. One more pro tip for you guys is if they nibble, four times, the next nibble that they do on the fifth one is a guaranteed bite. So keep that in mind. All right, anyway, so there's so many fish all across the different hemispheres, across the different uh, months. Go through, collect all of them. Whenever he says yes at the beginning, that's a brand new fish that you never caught before. So definitely send it over to Blathers so that you can fill out that awesome aquarium. Next up on our list is all about fruit trees. It's inevitable that you guys are coming on board and having native fruits. For example, my native fruit was cherry, so the cherry trees were all over the place. Now, once you're able to expand out and go to different people's towns or visit some rare islands, you can indeed get all sorts of different fruit trees. So our next thing is going to be harvesting and planting all sorts of different trees. Depending on what you want, there's apples, there's peaches, there's pears. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Depending on what you want, you can indeed take any of those trees out there, simply harvest them all, go over to your shovel, and if you want to plant a brand new one for the next day so it'll grow for you, all you have to do is dig a hole and easily drop one in. You're done, that's it, plant. So harvesting and planting your fruit trees. So speaking of trees, Now's the time to talk about shaking them. Shaking trees is very beneficial in this game, but I would highly suggest doing so with a net in hand in case you come across a wasp's nest. So head on over to any one of your bare trees that does not give fruit and definitely give it a good shake. You might find something like money, for example. You might find some rare furniture or you might find branches and wasps. Branches are a very, very valuable crafting item. So if you didn't find a single branch, you can shake a tree multiple times in order to get more than one branch out. So take some time. If you guys really want to know exactly where your trees are at, shake every single one of them and find that elusive piece of furniture so that you guys can indeed have that uh, just for show. 
On the same note of trees, if you guys have a flimsy axe or a stone axe, you can indeed farm some materials, some wood materials, simply by chopping at any of the trees. Now the great thing about the flimsy axe and the stone axe is that they won't cut down any of the trees for you. So you can come out here, you can go through and you can get any regular wood, soft wood, or even hard wood that comes out randomly on these trees. Each of these trees will give you three drops. So make sure that you guys go through every single one of your trees if you want to and collect and harvest as many of these because these wood materials are very valuable, especially if you're doing a lot of crafting on your island especially for uh, houses, for furniture, or uh, even yet, just like making your entire town at a five-star ranking. You're gonna need to make a lot of different crafted items on your island. So head on over with your flimsy ax or even your uh, stone ax and just go chopping. So if you guys have the Able Sisters shop, simply by talking to Mabel when she sets up her little shop and buying some of her items uh, whenever she shows up in the town square, um, she'll actually move in. And that's going to be a great time for you because this will allow you to definitely take a look at what's inside the shop. You can purchase it and add it into anything that you want, your entire uh, outfits. You can buy these things. But the reason that I like coming over here is befriending Sable. Now Sable usually gives you a cold shoulder at the very beginning, but every single day, if you make it a point to talk to her, she'll actually address you by name and say, hey, welcome back. It's nice that you keep on supporting us rather than, hey, less talk, more sewing kind of a deal. So I like this. Um, yeah, see, every day for like a week, it's been, do you think Abdallah will stop by today? And I'm all, sis, confine your spines. We're not even open yet. So Sable starts becoming your best friend the more you talk to her. So put that as part of one of your things that you do every single day. She has maybe about two or three different uh, dialogues every single day. So make sure that you guys just spend some time, do that. And then while you're inside the Able Sisters shop, make sure that you buy out whatever options you like. So keep that in mind. All right, anyway. Oh my gosh, was she just saying something about me? I missed that. Anyway, <laughs> so if you didn't know, you can go inside the fitting room and you can purchase different colorations of any of the items that they're selling for today. So uh, like the hats, for example, I love these little pilot's hats. They look really great. So I'm definitely going to take one. Uh, and then any of these items here, you can, wow, look at this. Comic shorts? Yeah, that's pretty great. Look at these items. Yo, look at this awesome after school jacket. This looks great. You can buy all the different colorations and then click on the plus button and then purchase them. And then you don't necessarily have to wear them, but there you go. So buy the items because the selection changes every single day. And if you guys are looking for that epic royal crown like I'm wearing over here, keep on checking. You'll be able to find it eventually. Now, the game's not called Animal Crossing for no reason. As you guys can see, there are tons of animals that live on your island. And the more houses that you make from Tom Nook, the more villagers you're going to get. So our next point is going to be talking to your villagers. You never know exactly what's going on with them, right? You can talk to them, they can give you something, they can run up to you and give you a brand new emotion, you can go inside their house, you can give them items, there's so many things that you can do with them. And the more that you befriend them, the more lucrative it's going to be. As you guys can see over here, I'm gonna take a little bit of time and talk to this guy. He says uh, the options are, what are you up to? And then he's just gonna talk and he's making a gong, great. So maybe he's going to uh, give me a DIY recipe. Sure, go for it. So wrote some instructions, here we go. And boom, what do you know? We get a DIY recipe. And sometimes they'll give you some really rare ones. So make sure that you guys are on top of talking to your animals every single day, because you never know what they're gonna give you. DIY recipes, furniture, shirts, money. They're gonna be able to give you reactions, tons of things that you can't buy. One of the last things on our list is sending letters to friends and animals. This one is a really fun thing, but of course it's optional. You don't have to do it every day, but it will help build rapport with all of your animals so they can become even better friends with you. Head on over to the Dodo Airline section and click on the card stand here. You can indeed purchase some, uh, send some letters. You can purchase some postcards to anyone. And then of course you're all set. You can attach an item and you can go from there. So I'm going to do send a letter to a resident here and I'm gonna give it to Pudge because he's always sad looking. So here we go, Budge. Uh, choose a card and then write a letter on it. So there's different, um, uh, different cute ones. Look, this one has a bunny day card. How cute is that? Anyway, so you don't necessarily have to write them a full on letter, but you can because they'll actually show off your letter. And uh, 
maybe show it to you in the future. So anyway, you click on this over here and I'm gonna give him, I don't know, what is this? A bingo wheel, sure, enjoy the bingo wheel. So click on okay, and then we're going to ship that off to him. Delivery fee comes at 200 bells, that's really nothing. So we sent the letter and then, depending on what you send them, if you give them like a, a golden crown, maybe like some sort of clothing accessory, or if you give them a piece of furniture and you go inside their house, they're going to display that piece of furniture, which is really cool. And if you have any extra crowns, wink wink, you can totally give all your villagers crowns and then they'll be wearing them when they're outside. Pretty fun. And on that same note, if you have friends on your Nintendo Switch friends list, you can absolutely send the exact same letters. So if you have a spare fossil that you don't necessarily need, consider sending it over to a friend because who knows, maybe they might not have it. So if you want to fast forward your time or naturally allow time to pass, you can indeed add wishing stars to your list of things to do every single day. At the end of the night, after 8 p.m. or something like that, as long as you have stars in the sky and it's not overcast, you can indeed press the right stick upwards and you can change your camera from default to looking up at the sky. Simply put, stand there for a little bit and then if you're lucky, you can get a meteor shower and or some shooting stars that happen. And once you see a shooting star, press the A button, you'll be able to wish. And then once you have your wishes done, the next day on the beach, depending on how many wishes you made, you'll be able to get some star fragments. So keep that in mind, it looks pretty awesome. If you guys wanna find out how exactly to spawn a specific um, meteor shower, Definitely pay attention to the morning announcements when Isabel or Tom Nook tells you if there's going to be one, or sometimes villagers can run up to you and tell you that there's going to be one. Or it's just random, so good luck with that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is coming full circle. Everything that I talked about in the game on what you can do in a day. When you are very complete and you're ready to turn in for the day, make sure that you head on over to your Nook Miles again. Remember, that was one of the first things that we started with, and now it's going to be one of the last things that we're going to end with. Clicking on Nook Miles Plus, as you guys can see over here, talking to your neighbors, I talked to three of them, and I'm going to claim my dailies for this. Now, the game is going to try to suck you in even more by giving you some more dailies, so play the game at your own pace. And of course, if you guys have gone through and done any other different achievements throughout the entire day that you are playing, uh, scroll through your different Nook Miles achievements and see if you have anything over here that you can indeed claim and take your miles for it. Now, miles are something that you can't necessarily farm so easily as you can bells, so they're going to be a little bit more limited in supply. So just keep on playing the game. You'll unlock even more opportunities for Nook Miles, and then you guys can go from there. So it's a great opportunity right over here. So just scroll through before you're done, and then you guys are all set. So aside from picking weeds, which is something that I talk to you guys about, possibly at the end. Uh, click on the minus button, you're gonna click on save and end, and that is everything that you need to do in your game for Animal Crossing New Horizons. What did you guys think? Pretty awesome, huh? Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed something about Animal Crossing, and I hope this teaches you something that you guys can do. Now, keep in mind, everyone plays Animal Crossing differently. The moment that the game starts feeling like a chore, you wanna maybe take a step back and not do that, or else, Animal Crossing is going to become a chore and you're not gonna enjoy it as much. So think of these 25 plus things as optional things that you can add to your list of things that you already do. By all means, none of this stuff is mandatory. It's just some more food for thought. So keep that in mind. Thanks so much for watching. Again, my name's Abdallah. Make sure you guys are subscribed for all of the latest and greatest Animal Crossing content, tips and tricks, tutorials, live streams, all that fun stuff. If you guys wanna jump on board into our Discord where we have tons of people trading and chatting about Animal Crossing, it's discord.gg slash Abdallah. So make sure you guys check that out. And if you guys wanna support me even further, click on the join button, just like uh, Jolly Ranch over here. You guys are great, thanks for becoming members. All right, looking forward to reading all of your comments. Did I miss anything? Would you guys like to add anything onto the list? Let me know in the comment section and let's keep on uh, with the conversation. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.